I probably screwed that up already, but that's all right. That's all right. This, no, you got it. You got oh, yeah. it. <laughs> this is Aya. This is the podcast. And she asked a question off the air, and I'm going to answer it on the air. Is Was it easy to get your podcast out? Yes and no. Is it was my answer. And so here's, here's the thing. The first thing, like when you do a podcast, the thing you got to recognize is unless you have a certain built-in audience, you're never mm. going to, right? This is the, this is the, this is the thing. I built my audience from scratch. So in one sense, it was super hard. But on another okay. sense, it's super, because I, I have like 10 rules of success. The first rule is show up. And if you go in and you actually start or be, are consistent about it, right? Consistent about yes. doing that, inevitably you yes. will get an audience. So no one's going to care at first. This is what like, I, I always, when I do a podcast talk, I say very quick, quietly, can you do 10 episodes? where you're enjoying what you're talking about. Because if you can do that, you can probably, you, you can do a thousand, right? There are you 10, you can do a thousand. If you okay. can't, then this is probably a hobby, right? Or this is probably a, um, just a moment in time. And again, you can do instructional stuff with podcasts too, yeah. or advertising. So like you saw what I did with the video stuff, like I'm building advertising little commercials as well, yes. which is, yes. right? So yeah. you can do a lot with your, with your, with your stuff. But the thing is, when you look at it from the point of view of um, building an audience, it's hard. But the real secret, it's, it's simple, but it's hard. And, I, and the simple part is, okay, you make an episode, you put an episode out, you do it at around the same time, every week, every month. It's that simple. Like, it's that fucking simple. But you and I both know that's not easy, especially at late, late, right, 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 because what's, what ends up happening is, and what ends up happening is, life happens, things go up, up and down, and, Come on. and, and do it right. So you have to. And so, what I say to people that are doing this is, if you're serious about it, find ten episodes you want to do. Figure out how long you want to talk. That's important. That's probably as important too, because that also kind of dictates where your audience goes. My show evolved. When it started, it was one episode, okay. half hour to an hour. That was it. Right now okay. it's an okay. hour plus. Now it's an hour plus, right? Usually, right? And and it didn't like I said. Okay. And I want. I'm, I went from once a week to like four or five times a week. So it is like like I went yeah. like I built this. I've built this thing. So I mean, yeah. when I was at um the five. So when I was at the five year mark, I was at three hundred and fifty episodes. Okay, because I went to Twitch. Wow. I started like I've done a lot of episodes in the last two years. Like I've done a lot of them. Okay. What's happened is my audience has significant. It's like it's like anything else. Like the sheer volume of content grows. Yes. Right. So like yes. I'm trying. To, so I'm trying to start. So I'm I'm trying to start an advertising business because I believe that authentic authentic connection is a lot better than you can still need ads. But honestly, like yes. the truth of the matter is, people don't buy products. They buy either people, ideas, or feelings. That's that's, that's advertising in a nutshell. Oh, right. Yeah. One of those three. Right, it's one, two, or three. Right, I love so, that. Okay, yeah, and does that make sense? Right, the mm -hmm. product almost doesn't matter, it almost doesn't. It does because you're trying to sell, but so what am I good at? I'm, I've done thousands of interviews even before the podcast. I've been interviewing people for 20 years, I get a pretty good read on people. I can pretty much look at okay, this is what you're good at, this is what you suck at. Emphasize mm -hmm. this, don't emphasize this. Let's build a story and let's tell it. And that's like that's the advertising end of it, right? That's the advertising end of it. But even on the on the podcast itself, um, I it looks like he listened to an nice an episode or two, right? Um, based yes. if I'm going by demographics, yes. So and then we talk about like and again, I let people, I give people the freedom here to be themselves. Like I made some very conscious decisions about my show, and that's the other thing too. So if you're gonna uh -huh. do a show. Okay, here's your advantage. You have an audience. Uh -huh. So you growing your show won't take you as long as it took me to do it because uh -huh. you built your audience I, right, or in other ways. And you can bring them uh -huh. over to listen to you. So that's your big advantage. Your big disadvantage is uh -huh. do you have something you're passionate enough to talk about every – I'm going to say this. If you want it to really grow, two to three times a week is – probably the sweet spot. I have a big mouth that goes like four or five, right? Yeah, okay. right, right. So, right, right. That's the sweet spot. Because again, and it regularly putting out content and do you want to grow? Once you get, and the money in the podcasting is your audience, 
right? That is not your content and your audience. So yeah. that's the thing you got to understand. It was like, I on average, outside of holiday weeks, I get somewhere between um, 300 to 600 downloads a week. That's not a huge audience, but that's a solid yeah. audience, right? Very small. I can yeah. command certain advertising yeah, yes. I can command certain advertising rates just based on that alone, right? It's solid. It's not big, but it's not mm-hmm. small. Right. It, and I, I, I hit I hit notes because of that. So, again, so that is like in a nutshell, the business model of a podcast directly. Like, OK, so I've gone on the Twitch. We're on Twitch right now. Twitch, people watch my stuff Twitch. after the show, which is I Twitch. Yeah, we're on Twitch right now. Okay. So here's the thing. Normally, mm-hmm. like you see it, like there's one viewer. I don't get viewers live very much. I get viewers that listen after oh. the show which is annoying because yeah. I can't become an affiliate that way. But I do have a following that grows. Indirectly speaking, I'm creating demand. Again, it's advertising for the audience, right? Yeah. It's, again, that's the way I do. I, like, I try to treat this show in, like, you want, like, the pure business sense of it. It's a commercial for what you do, right? Okay. That's, 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 that, that's the business sense of it. The not-so-business sense of it is okay. you're, you're, you're trying to establish a connection to people out there. That's the job, whatever that is for you and okay. whatever that authentic. And I, I always value authenticity because authenticity has a tendency to, um, it rings true. You can kind of tell when yeah. someone's bullshitting you or not. Yes. yes. Right. So, right. This is me. Like you, I, right, this is who I am. This is what I do. So that, that's, that, that's, that's, this is like, you're laughing because you know, you, you can hear it. You can hear the truth in that. This is who I am. I don't both like, this is, this is it. Like, like it, lump it. I don't give a shit, right? That's that. This is who I am, and mm-hmm. and that's that. It, and that's the, actually the final secret too. And it is, you got to be okay with people not liking you or disagreeing with you. Or I'm pretty cool about people disagreeing with me, but I, so I, I get I think a little bit more of a pass than some people. But at the mm-hmm. same time, like this is. But at the same time, I also kind of like like when you're younger, you're trying to like not piss people off when you get i'm 40 i don't care now i'm just gonna do me i'm gonna do me and if you don't like it fuck it i don't care right and that's and that's um that's a different but you get but you get there how old are you because you're your mom right you got two kids you might you told me off the air i do i'm 49 i'm almost like knocking on the door of 40 yeah. we're, we're almost there come on <laughs> it, it, it's okay you look good like 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 you've done well and like i say i um how, so, so, right. You don't look forty, and that's good. Like you've taken care of yourself. Sounds like it sounds like you're doing it. You're you you you're doing what you're doing. Um, so, we'll we'll get to you just a second. The last. This is the final thing I'm gonna say. Like, if you can do all that, if you yeah. can do all that, or if you can do all that, it will take some time. Whatever your number target mm-hmm. is, it will take time, mm-hmm. right? But. It, you, you're a big advantage, and reiterate this: you already have a brand. So I, I've, I've seen your show, I've seen your thing, I've seen your followers, seen your grow. Um, so that's that's why, like, I'm I'm telling you, um, just don't, just don't. Uh, you have a good starting base. You're not right, um, and and so build on that, right? You know okay. who you are. Yes. Figure out what you give a shit about. Talk yes. about it. Repeat. It sounds, okay. I make, I'm making it sound okay. fucking simple. I'm making it sound fucking simple. I know it's not. Like, I know, I know it's not easy. There's a difference between simple and easy. Simple there's a, and easy, yeah, I like that. There is. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a big difference. Oh, yes. Right? Simple is, like, you can break things down into steps, and that's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when it's, all right, that is simple. Mm-hmm. Easy is doing nothing. Easy you is like doing that. I love that. Easy is doing the. I'm gonna steal. Can I steal that? Can you I use steal, that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you credit the first time. Just the first. Yeah. Time. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it, it, just just send people my way. The, the way I look at it, you're advertising. You're doing me a favor. Okay. Yeah, send people my way. All right. So. Uh, I'm, so like, I'm like. I got. Job. Yeah. No. It's just that. That's it. Like like people go. People who used to go to me, you make this sound easy. It's like, no, I don't make this sound easy. I make it sound simple. There's a difference, right? I'm not saying it's, this is this is going to be easy. You're going to actually have to do something. So, no, it's not going to be easy. But 
it's simple. If you can break it down into steps, you can do it, right? And that that's the whole point. It doesn't matter what it is. Like, mm-hmm. can I get like I've I've had I've had a two thousand download week on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've had that. Mm-hmm. Can I get there again? Sure. How am I going to get there? Just keep riding the wave. Now, mm-hmm. I like like because I'm a freelancer and I'm kind of playing the freelance game. Now I might have to go get myself a day job to invest and do the proper like mm-hmm. advertising channels to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I work at Wendy's. I don't give a fuck at this point in my life. I just like, yeah, 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 I just don't care. It'll serve a purpose, and then I get the fuck out. So that's it. That's yes. where I'm at. That's where I'm yeah. at right now. Yes. I'm either gonna have fun. I'm gonna get paid well. Yes. Or I'm going to use it like a bitch and leave. That's this. Yes. That's that's all there is. That's all there is. I totally feel that. No, yeah. Really. No. Every, no. Everybody does, right? We've got like the last three years of Bracey Taws. Like most of this shit doesn't matter. Mhm, mhm, mhm. Why do you say that? Tell me why you say because, that. Because, other than doing what you love, mm-hmm. the people you love. What else is there? Mm. Not a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Not much of the shit matters, now does it? Right? Not a lot. Come on. No. So it's it's simple. Like I said, I keep it simple. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't need a lot. Now I'm trying to change some things in my life too, because again, I'm am a freelancer. I'm trying to go. I'm going through some ups. I'm going through the ups and downs that come with it. Yes, I do want nice things for mm-hmm. myself, but what I really want, and this, this is straight up, I want to go travel. I want to interview people across both countries. I want to make an ass of make a make a make an ass of myself on the air like I do like I'm doing right now, and then uh, I want to keep and I just want to keep writing and telling stories. That's all I really give a shit about, and hopefully I find someone crazy enough to go with me on the adventures. That's it. That's all I want. No. It's simple. I'll keep it really fun. Oh, well. Notice, no house, no car, no American dream, none of that bullshit. No, 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 no. I, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do it. Yes. Yes. I love that. Yeah, straightforward to the point. Like, that's that's pretty much it. We haven't even gotten into you yet. You listen a lot. I do. I'm a good listener. I'm a great listener, actually. I am. Yeah. I'm interested. I think yeah, I you have to, to be talk. interested to to listen, right? You have to be like interested. So Wait. I'm interested. Yeah. Well, see you. See, I already got something. I got something kind of pegged about you. So you're a businesswoman, and what you realize about all everything, right? A good a good business person, whatever whoever mm-hmm. it is, is going to listen because you don't have good ideas are everywhere. You have to be willing, uh-huh, but they're, uh-huh. and often they're right around you. You just uh-huh. have to be open to the possibilities of those opportunities that present themselves. If you are, you might yes. have some money where other people won't see it. Yes. And I'm one of willing to bet that you have enough, that you can, you are very good at recognizing opportunities. You have to be, I have, I, <laughs> I have to be for several reasons, so yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that's why you listen first, and that's why you listen first because you're always you're always looking at what else is out there, and it's not bad quality, by the way. I just think that with you, based on ten minutes of observing you, it's like mm-hmm. she likes she likes soaking it all in. <laughs> yes, but you were telling me some good stuff. You know, I'm I'm starting a podcast, so I'm I, I was really listening. I said okay. I want to know because I am starting my own podcast and I want to see. I mean, you've been so consistent, so I want to see how you did it. Yeah. So, so what's your so what's your secret? So, what do what's your podcast going to be about? Um, it is going to be mom plus entrepreneur, and it's going to be a podcast that showcases women who are entrepreneurs who are mommies, active mommies. So, so when, I, when I say active mommy. All I mean is your kids are under 18. So like you're actively parenting them, um, yeah. you know, taking them places, cooking for them, you know, all that kind of stuff. They're still children. And uh, so it's just about people to, to share their story. The whole p- purpose of it for me is to motivate and inspire other, other would be mompreneurs to, cause it's hard, you know, mm-hmm. raising kids is a challenge in its own, like it's its own thing. <laughs> right. But then having a business is its own thing. And then you put the two together, you know, you always want um, some encouragement. 
Yeah. And there's and there, Here's one of my little ones right here. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's okay. So if, if it makes you feel better, I had an author's three-year-old son hold the show hostage for 45 minutes. How? How did he do that? What did he do? Just, just give it just, just, hey, mommy, look at this. Hey, mommy, look at that. Right? Because, because <laughs> right? It's really, you are, are you kidding? Three-year-olds have terrifying power because they just, they just know, right? Like, right? Like, you're going to. They're in control. Yeah. Okay, go back to your room. She is actually three, so. But they're so used yeah, to me so, being so, on so, camera, so, so. so they know. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, but you, you, even even so, I was like, hey, mommy, come show me. They, they don't give a crap about what you're doing. They just don't, right? No. So, no. And, 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 and that's not a bad thing either. It, it, it's a humbling thing. So, like mm -hmm. I said, I know my place in the, I like, I'm an award-winning podcaster, but also I've had my show held hostage by a three-year-old. I think that's going to be my author bio. Again, like I have enough funny stories that I can actually just go because you got you, you got to take the good with the bad, right? And you, uh, you, you have to. And I don't even think it's necessarily a bad a bad thing. It's just like, so what am I supposed to do? Like I look at a three year old taking making control of the show. I I can't yell at the three year old. Like it's not I'm my kid. And right, you, right? <laughs> you just you just have to you just you just realize like you know. If I if I do have kids someday, they're going to rule my life the same way they like he ruled hers or in that moment, right? It just that's just that's the way it is. Uh -huh. That is the way it also should be. Like like, oh. like like this desire to be like when I do have if I do have kids, I just realize that I'm not going to be in control of my life very much. I'm just going to just try to get through the day of knowing what the hell I'm supposed to do. What am I doing today? Because I otherwise oh. it's, I, I, I'm, again I'm going to keep it simple because I already know me oh. control. Yeah, especially when they're really little. Once they start getting older mm -hmm. and they have friends and they have lives, it's a little different, but yeah. Well, see, then parents want you to revisit recess. Like that's, that's the, you, you can have your own recess at that moment. It's like, oh my God, I have yes. these, these Finally, days. like five years later, right. like five years in, like your first 20 minute recess. <laughs> oh my like, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and you scream just like they like he did when you were a kid doing recess in school. Like, yes! And afterwards, like, oh crap, I blew my first twenty minute break. When am I going to get another one? But they start coming more regularly at that point. But even so, yes. even so, yes. um, I mean, I mean, they're still like. And, and by the way, I I don't say this with any malice. It's just this is the way it is. Like when you decide to have a kid, you bring them into the world, and you're responsible. And the thing about that is, um, you have to realize that you know you're not really in charge anymore it's not about you at least not completely about you anymore it's, it's about true them. how do you know this how do you know i, I find not too many pre-parents that know that how do you know tell me because because i was raised with some really good parents okay and oh okay my dad was amazing my mom wasn't as amazing they're there uh will will I won't go into great great detail about that. That a lot of that is mom's choice. Some circumstances beyond both parents' control. Circumstances in both parents' control. But what it comes down to, what it comes down to, there is um, my dad was a great parent. My grandmother on my dad's side is also like a fantastic parent. She raised like six. I was screwed. Five boys. And I was like the sixth boy. So I there's nothing I could do that she hadn't already seen. Right? There's nothing. Okay. Right. But what I realized is like when you see that kind of generosity, you realize again, it oh. like my, my when when my dad had the uh talk about you know sex when I went into teenagers, like straight up, you're responsible for whatever you bring into the world. They didn't ask to be born. Right? And that was his whole philosophy. Like I didn't like I, I put you in the world here or I played a part in putting you in the world and I should therefore be responsible for you. Uh -huh. Um, when I look, when I look at, um, when I look at, when I do date women with kids, uh -huh. one of the things I do look at is how they treat their kid, because it's one of those, uh -huh. it's going to uh -huh. tell me something about how they're going to, like, if I do decide, if we decide we go somewhere, chant like that, like it goes somewhere, uh -huh. chances are at some point she might go, I'm late and we're, like, it happens, right? It's part of, it's part of the process of life. Uh -huh. So what do you, if you're, what do you, if you're like, I'm going to look at what you're doing now, 
and I'm going to be like, yeah. okay, like I, this is something I do legitimately look for with like, with women who do have kids. Is how do they treat their kids? Because that's going to tell me a lot what kind of parent they are, mm-hmm. right? And also, if if they if they don't give a shit about their kid, they're not going to give a shit about any kid I make with them. And that is a big that is a big sight, right? <laughs> I'm honest, right? Like, the, <laughs> like, it's so true. I wanted to go back to that word that you used. I, I love that. You said generosity. Yeah. Why did you use that word? That was so amazing. Gen- generosity and reg- like, repeat, repeat what you I were said saying, there. You were talking about your dad. You were like, and your grandma. You were talking about your grandma. Yeah. Yeah. And you said that she was so generous. Like she had, when you see that type of generosity. Yeah, I was. Because, that is exactly what it is. You have to be generous to be a good parent. That's what struck me about it. You have mm-hmm. to be generous. Like you have to be giving to be a good parent. Mm-hmm. You do. You have to be giving, and you also just have to be there. Um, like I, um, like I said, I'm not gonna go. I, I've seen both sides of that equation in my yeah. family. Um, mm-hmm. My 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 dad's side was was were the good parent. My dad's side was the good parents. My mom's side. I'm not going to talk about my grandparents on my mom's side because that that's a different that's a different topic. But my mom was not the greatest parent. Just mm-hmm. just wasn't. Yeah. See, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? See again, right? Oh, just, oh. Hi, mom. I love you. <laughs> I say it like that because I've seen again when you see that. When you see that mom, it's like, can you provide that? Can you be that? And wow. and again, you're right. I don't have kids. But this is like when I do think of having kids, this is what I look at. Like a lot of people don't think about that with me because again, I'm single. I, I but I, again, yeah. when I do, if I do think about the idea of having kids someday, it's like, well, I want to be there for them because I was. I know it's like when a parent's not there for you. I also know when a parent when a parent is there, and it's way better when the parents there. It's so much better when the parents there, and and uh, it makes a huge di- it makes a, it makes a huge difference. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's yeah. like my grandmother, yeah. my grandmother and my dad are, are are amazing parents. Like it, my dad's my dad doesn't he's a naturopath, he's a great healer. My grandmother is happily retired and has been so for a long time. But yeah, they are. Some of the best examples of parenting I've ever seen. For all their flaws, they're great parents, right? Oh, so. I love that. That's amazing. Yeah, I love that. Hey, I'm be thinking I know, that. I know. Like my, I, 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 I. It's one of those moments. You just, again, you recognize good people when you see it. Like I look at my dad. That's still a great guy. He, he, he's still one of the most generous dudes for his kids. Maybe not so much for the other people, but for us, he, he is right. Now that's my experience, right? And I had, I can only go by mine. So again, when I have that model, when I date a woman that has a kid, it's something I look at very consciously with the woman I'm dating. If I do see that they have kids, right? I'm just like, how are you going? Is it to, how are is you? Is it like a deal breaker, breaker if they have kids, or are you just are you open to that? No, or? no, it's not deal. No, no, the deal the deal breaker is not if they have kids. The deal, mm-hmm. the, the deal breaker is how they treat them. That's like, like I'm going how to be, they treat them. Okay. That that can be the deal breaker, right? Because yeah. I'm again, okay. I'm I'm thinking long term. I might want kids. Uh, are you right? And and even if I don't want kids, things do happen. When... What what is the de- what is the deciding factor for you to say I want? What are you still thinking about? I, I want to know. But no, like, there's, there's no, no, there's nothing about. I, I just, I like just why think right now. Because I, up until this point, I've been chasing my dreams my whole life. And the thing is, and I, this okay. is just me being honest about myself. Yeah. Up until I would say five years ago, there's no chance I would have been ready for kids. Because what would have happened there? What happened there was I was still so engrossed, and then also again, just some of my own. Again, just watching my parents' history and some things around me, I wasn't really ready for relationships. About five years ago, that changed, right? Now, again, it's maybe a little late in the game, whatever. It I mean, at least I, fig- I, 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 at least I figured it out now, and I can still do it, right? Um, right, but at the same, yeah. but at the same, but at the same time, like at the same time. Um, so now there's this. 
I am a freelancer trying to get to the point where I'm able to sustain myself. I'm not there yet. I'm close, but I'm not okay. there yet. Right. I'm going through the, okay. right now I'm going through the ups and okay. I'm going to, and then this month might be a down and then who knows about next month. Like, you know how freelancing can be. It can be enough. Yeah. Like business can be up. It can be down. Yeah. And yeah. you have to get, and you have to get yeah. to a point where you can mm -hmm. invest in yourself enough that you can keep growing yes. with that. Right. Yes. And that I'm not yes. there. So mm -hmm. here's the thing. This is a responsibility thing. If I'm not there yet for myself, how can I in good conscience, Okay. Again, okay. I do, th I, I, I do think about this stuff, right? Right. I do. Okay. Think about this stuff. Right now, I get now maybe it could be as early as the end of this year. Advertising is a pretty bulletproof industry, and once I get myself established, I'm probably going to be able to command some of my own rates eventually. That's a little yeah. bit of a different story yeah. now, isn't it? Now, yeah. All, now. The challenge there, though, if we're going to talk about relationships, is once I actually do have money, it, in some ways, it's easier to get 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 a woman in your life, but it's hard to dis dis to distinguish if they're a good, if they're good for you, because it's easy because it, when you okay, have, let's talk about that. Let's, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let's talk about that. So I like that. So let's talk about. That. I want to talk about that. So you said once you have money, it's to have to get a woman in your life i love that you said it's harder to distinguish if she's good for you why i want to know because it goes it's almost like this if i go if i'm going to date someone now i have nothing if they like me they genuinely okay. like me it's easier like to be okay. honest about that okay. right now yeah. i suddenly I, I again when i go out i do dress better a lot more when i go out now i've noticed i've gotten a lot more looks now when i actually have money to command that that is going to attract attention immediately from every like like okay. it does it just does and I I've seen yeah. it a zillion times it, right yeah. but here's the thing it's mm -hmm. okay if that's the, what attracts them to you it's not in itself a terrible crime the crime the thing is is it me or is it what I have are you trying to take from me or are you actually here for me. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. All right. so, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that? It does. Do you it's think so a lot of men are thinking that? Like, so my, I'm always curious. No. Do you think? <laughs> you, <laughs> okay. Okay. No. I mean, do you think that they Not like? When, you're when do they realize that? Like, when do when do you think they realize? Because I, I do feel like people realize that eventually. No, no, so here, here's here's right. the thing. When you sit, like, okay, so when you become successful, I, I didn't go with both sexes, by the way. It's not just men on this one. It's both sexes. Mm -hmm. When you become successful, you look at the world very differently. You start achieving things. And, okay. and like I said, you see things differently. Because now you've done something, right? You've done something. Okay. So now that you have your own confidence, you have your own awareness of what you're capable of. But also, okay. here's the thing. You did something a lot of people are struggling for. So now it goes like this. People are going to look at you. The natural question is, how did you do it? Okay. Right? And yeah. there's another. And, and depending on the nature of some, I'm not going to say everybody has this, but some people do. Can I take from you? Wow. right that is that is human nature there's there's a human element of that i so one of my ex-girlfriends has confidence issues i figured this out after we were done okay and she would she would and i real i didn't realize this until far far later um she because she did not have confidence and she was wondering how i got confidence and wasn't sure how to get there the solution would be, well, can I take that from you? Because if I can take your confidence away, you're just like me, right? And then, right, right. And then, and I don't think it's necessarily like a. Right? It can, it goes like this is like when you're looking at relationships, right? Uh -huh. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not necessarily uh -huh. the first thing I think about when I look at a pretty woman. It's not. I'd be lying to you if I said that was the first thing I think about. But inevitably, uh -huh. inevitably, 
I'm going to talk yeah. to you. I'm going to get yeah. to know you. Yes. And what I'm going to care about is what I'm going to look as pretty as you are. Mm -hmm. If there's nothing here or there's nothing here, mm -hmm. I'm going to get bored. Okay. Okay. There has to be something here. I respect. There has to be mm -hmm. something here. I admire. Mm -hmm. So guys, there has to be. And that's every guy. The biggest mistake oh, men, men, women make when they're young is that they're trying to please the guy. But if they do it and see if they're too pleasing, the guy doesn't respect it. Right? It's That's the biggest mistake women make when they're younger. Women, when they're older, realize that they have their own worth. So now what you're measuring is worth to worth. Okay. This is what I got. This is what you got. Okay. What are oh, you? Gosh. <laughs> That, 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 that's the bottom line. At the end, like at the end of the day, mm. like again, we would be lying to both of us would be lying to say if we we're mm. talking about from a vanity standpoint mm -hmm. that we didn't have to like what we see from our partner. We do, and we'd be okay. lying to ourselves if we said otherwise. But moving that okay. aside, and again, for women, I know look at things a little differently than guys a little bit, but even so, you still gotta like yeah. that to some degree. You still gotta yeah. like that to some degree. Mm -hmm. Number two, yeah, right. We gotta be able to talk to each other always. Can you actually talk to somebody and actually, and is it actually going to be a real conversation? Okay. Because if it, because if it's not, what the fuck are you? What, what the fuck are we doing? And number yeah. three, yeah. right? So you gotta got be willing to do that. And it's really ideal if we share similar interests, goals, or it's ideal again. Not necessarily. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be quite the same thing, but okay. we recognize the worth of those things in each other because. Otherwise, otherwise, this is what's going to happen. Now, if we're working together, it might, the only the only downside of that is if we're working together, we only accomplish a goal. We might lose that interest. I've seen that too with with, with partners. They they build everything up together, and it's like, oh, now what do we do, right? And, and right because we've done it all, and and what drove us to be together is no longer now we're comfortable. Oh shit, right? Can we can we get along? There's there's a damn, but if but so you got to con like that's the again. I, and again, I, I just speak on this from from my perspective. I, that, again, I'm not the most experienced guy in relationships either. I, I'd be lying to you. But this is something I realize like, in people. We often, mm -hmm. okay, from a business standpoint, you look, you, you look for quarters over pennies in terms of customers. Okay. Right? Yeah. Does, that, yeah. does that make sense? Relationships, yes. you have to do the same thing. Right? Getting like, like right, right, you have to do the same thing. You have to do you have to do the same thing, and that's that's the frustrating part of it. So the problem, and so here's the last thing. I'm middle aged, and I'm like I I'm I'm open to it. But the problem here's the other problem. Most people by my age have usually gone through a divorce, have gone through some sort of brain damage, trauma with whomever they've chosen to date. So now there's trust issues on the inside. So. That's that's that 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 that's the that's usually that so you have to filter so the filtering process goes like this all those three things and does the person you're with actually trust because if there's no trust there's no chance if there is no trust okay yeah all right that's and then that's true with business it's true with relationships mm -hmm. it's true it's true yeah. with everything yeah if if, if the person so now to the point that I, I mean, this is where I can be an asshole. Like this is the talk business for a second. If I go on someone yeah. going on the podcast and I, right. I've had some people go in the last minute go, Hey, I can only go a half hour. Hey, I can only do this. I can only do that. I just cut the show. I don't care. You know what you're getting into because I look at it like this. You've asked me to come set this up and you agreed to this. You're mm -hmm. going to show up. Yeah. All right. I had a, a, a gentleman who did not get my confirmation emails for whatever reason. Now, right? And, and but it was after the second time. It was the second. It was the second time we missed out on the interview. So I decided it's like, you know what? I don't care if I interview you. Not because I I, I don't want I don't yeah. want to interview you, but you don't value us like I value this. So I'm going to treat you accordingly. I'm just go right. I right. So Whoa, and I. And I do, and I do that in business too. I do that in business too. I, if if, if you don't value what I do, I'm I'm just gonna drop you like a bad habit. 
Ooh, like a bad habit? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People don't drop bad habits, though. You're going to drop them like they are. It's, it, 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 it's an old, old saying, right? It's a very old saying. But, <laughs> yeah. But like that's but that's but that's the but that's the thing, right? You have to the biggest thing about freelancing, biggest thing about relationships, all this thing. And I think maybe this is the problem. I think this is the problem with the human race in general. We don't okay. see our own worth. We have to learn what that worth is in life, whatever that is. And then that's what, and then learning that we must be willing to fight for it. All right. And that's Okay, so okay. So hold on. We going we're going real deep here. This is like we in the deep end. I love this. So we, I, you got to break it down to me. You going so quick. You, you, you know, get with the nuggets. So you said we are not knowing our worth. So you said, and then once you learn, you have to learn to fight for it. So mm -hmm. tell us, talk to us about how, because I, I, I agree. The reason why I'm so excited is because I actually agree with that, but in, I want to hear what you would tell someone how they can learn their worth. So this is what I do to people, someone like you. Okay. We haven't talked about your business yet at all. So, so, what, <laughs> so just, just for sake of argument, what do you, what do you do just for the audience here? And now we need this is important for the example I'm giving it. All right. I'm going to answer so your question. I'm a writer, mm -hmm. a writer. I, I've written books. I have nine books. Um, I am a speaker, I'm a professional speaker. So I speak on the speaker circuit and then I'm a coach. So I have a coaching program for moms and stuff like that. So those are the three things I do. I have an e-commerce business too, but I don't, I barely talk about that, but there you go. Okay. Okay. So I'll top of my head. Okay. I've written nine books. How long have you had, and you've done this all while having kids? Yeah, yes. I started doing that. You've done this all having kids. You've done yes. this all having kids, right? Yes. And single mom or married? I don't know. So I, if it's too personal, you don't we're, have to answer we're that. Di but. We're divorcing. We're divorcing. So I've been a single mom for two years. It'll be two years next month. Okay. So, so, okay. Did you release any books on that time? No, I released all, I released all my books after, after, the, after we separated. Okay. So. So here's the, so so what I would tell someone like so we often take for granted what we accomplish. In your particular case, right? You've written nine books. You are coaching people, so you would probably have inspired quite a few people with your own stuff. You're raising two kids right now, yeah, right, yeah, and you've dealt with it, like and you're dealing with your own shit to boot. That is, a, it takes an amazing mm -hmm. amount of discipline, courage, and tenacity to do those things. So the way I, for the very first thing I do when I look at your self worth is I will listen to what you've done. And because more often than not, people okay. take for granted what they do. So when you build a resume, right? Okay. You got to talk about all your experiences. Mm -hmm. I have to do like four resumes now mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of everything I've done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because otherwise I'm like, I, I, I'm pricing my stuff out of the market if I don't. Right. So I have a resume mm -hmm. just for like, Back in the days when I used to work grocery jobs and factory jobs, I have another resume for me doing writing stuff, and I have another resume for me doing podcast video stuff because I have enough. Uh -huh. I have enough for all of those things uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. to make their own separate resumes. Right. And now I'm starting to do advertising to boot, which yeah. means that I got that on my plate now too. And then yeah. I'm drawing covers and I'm doing other shit as well. Yeah. I'm a fucking badass, right? Yeah. Now, yeah, right, right. So are you. But I, you have to think, the first thing I tell people is, think of what you've done objectively and ask yourself how okay. many other people do that. It's not a big list. Usually it's not, it's like whatever you choose to do, that's not a big list. It takes dedication, focus, tenacity. And that's what thing. Like I, the first thing I would tell people is realize what you've done to get to where you are. Whatever it looks like at the end doesn't fucking matter. What matters is, right, right. What have you done? Because that can't be that can't be taken from you. That's what you've done. This is who you yes. are. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the first mm -hmm. thing. Now, how you learn to fight? Now, in my case, I lived in the United States. I lived in Arizona, and I nearly got. I nearly. I nearly. I went through a very. I. I, I got to work for one of my heroes. It went south. It went south. 
-hmm. And I had a horrible year, the year after the point where the top of my teeth are no longer real. It was very, not drugs, but just, I went through an incredible hard time in my life. Starved, it dealt with a lot of shit on my own. Mm -hmm. Learned a lot of valuable lessons. Mm -hmm. The thing that, that gave me, though, is a certain ruthlessness. Right? I taught me, you know, we're living in the United States taught me how to be ruthless. A lot of authors don't. A lot of authors up here are, you have to be humble in art. And this, we'll talk about this, I'm sure, after. You have to be humble in your art. But when it comes to business, you have to be the most confident motherfucker on the planet. And you have to be willing, okay. to, stay, you have to, be willing to stand your ground, right? You got to be humble in, in the pursuit of learning, and you got to be bold in, in the pursuit of getting. That's just how it works, right? Um, right? You have to be that, direct, right? That, that, make, that makes sense, right? So, that, no, yeah, you, you have to. This is how it works, right? Now, I started an advertising business, so now I'm learning some lessons. Like, for example, I learned very recently, if a meeting goes longer than an hour mm -hmm. and you haven't made money, call the meeting. I learned this the hard way, but that's what I've learned, right? I learned this hard Like, little things like that, I'm still learning. But what I've also learned, what I've also learned is, like, but these are my rules. I want you, when you're serious, I don't want some half-ass, Hey, I'm not going to respect you because I'm going to basically my price point is going to slap some respect into you real quick, right? Because that's 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 why you have the price points you have. It's going to slap you real quick. I ain't going to waste my time with you. Yes. Not. I don't care yes. who you are. Yes. Right. At, right. Yes. And that's and that's the thing. Like I'm not like like if you're looking for a freebie, go somewhere else. I right. actually, uh, like today, today I actually had someone recommend me to go into an academic paper, like the academic journal. I'm looking at all the work I had to do. It's like, well, you're not going to pay me to do this. I don't give a shit about prestige. Yes. So I guess I'm not doing <laughs> it. You're like, so. I... <laughs> It, okay. it, 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 it's the truth. I don't like like you can't work for free for like what you, like business wise. They're coaching, giving you free coaching advice for free. You can do like fifteen minutes, a little nugget that doesn't cost you very much. Yeah. But if you're gonna put an hour or two hours with somebody, uh, you, no 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 that that pay up or fuck off, right? And that's it, yeah, right? Yes, I love that. Yes. Wow. So yeah, that's it. I, I, I love that. So now, so now, so let's go back to the relationships. So you're now saying women. So now they're like, now worth to worth. So you feel like, do you feel like women mm -hmm. attribute worth to men already automatically? Do you feel like they attribute worth to men automatically? What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you mean by that? I should, I should Cause clear, you said that, when that, Cause you said when young, when women are younger, they're trying to impress the guy. Right, and then they get older. They realize they have worth, and so now they're so focused on. I, I think. Things. I think. I, I. I think the first thing, and I think this is something again. I've realized as I've gotten older. The first thing I look at with any woman I'm interested in, do they have any self-respect? Mm -hmm. Right. Now, again, I'm not. I, I'm certainly not a saint. If it's only going to be like we're 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 only going to just fool around, that doesn't matter as much. But even so, right? Doesn't matter because it, it it's not it doesn't mean the same thing, right? In that in that in that context, if you're talking about a yeah. relationship, yeah. right? I am like I may yeah. not see it right away because I'm distracted by other things. I'm cert like I said, I'm certainly human, but inevitably I'm going to eventually come to the worth. How do you see yourself? Okay. And I imagine, and, and I imagine, I imagine, now, I don't know if it's exactly the same thing. With, I, I don't pretend I know everything because God knows I don't. Right. But, um, all right. But I imagine that once you have that self respect, you're not just going to put that in, you're not going to put yourself in a situation where that's going to be constantly challenged. It's only I, ima I imagine anyway. Right. So, I would think I so I would think you'd have a similar measuring stick. I don't know if it's exactly the same thing, but it'd be similar. It's like if I if, if we were dating hypothetically, mm -hmm. are you 
someone. Josh, you want to date I me? Feel are, you, are you trying to date me? Are you trying to ask me out on the on the camera? You could just be yeah, dragged. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so my phone up. Just give me your number. No, just like, but I mean. I'll tease out. Tease uh, out. Uh, me too, me too, right? But I, I'll play. No, but the thing is, what like what it would come down to is, would you, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to be looking at this. You've worked hard to get to whatever it is you have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Will the person on the other end of the spectrum appreciate that? I now again it might not be a self respect thing. I don't know. Like whatever that worth is for you might be very different. Mm -hmm. But ultimately at the end of the day, this is this is what I what I've learned is um you if you see yourself as just anybody, then anybody could kind of fit that shoe. Now that won't be great for you, but it I mean, if that's all you see yourself as, that's what you're gonna find. If if you want to see yourself as something more, you're going to get tested a little bit with that. There's going to be people that come into your life that's going to be Ooh. like, are you sure that's all you're seeing? No, let's talk about, why are you saying that? Let's, let's talk about the test. Let's talk about because that. Because I'm, I, I, I'm going, I'm seeing this now. I, I think a lot of people don't know that. Don't know that they're going to be tested. I believe that. Sure. So they, they. Yeah, no, no. It, it, it. So talk to us about that. Talk to us about that. So uh, I, I so this is when I learned that life I was going to be tested. I don't pass every test, but I do my best. Um, so the first, so I made a decision. This was so I was 19 years old, Windsor, Ontario. I made the decision that I was going to go to this church. And on the way to this church, this really pretty woman got on there and she started flirting with me. And I knew the, one of the reasons. I, this is just one of these inner boy things in my head. Are you sure you really want to go to church? Or do you want to go after this gal? Right? One of those life things. It's not the only, like, like it's not, I'll give you a really adult example. I'm not going to name names, but I'm going to give you a really adult examples of these kind of tests in life that happened to you. Um, so that was my, that was the first time I realized that life will test you. One of the, now, now I'm not, I'm not going to mention the test I failed. I'm going to mention the test after where I, I think I succeeded. So one of my final nights when I was in Arizona, after everything I'd went through in Arizona, and I was getting ready to leave, and, I, and a good friend of mine, she's a really good friend of mine, she still is, um, she, she told me, you need to go. Like, you just, you've hit the ceiling of where you can do here, you, you need to leave. However you get home, you get home, okay? But at that point, then she mentioned, like, like she was, she, she, she mentioned, this is in a small town in the middle of nowhere, and she mentioned why she married the guy she married. It wasn't for love, it was just part of it. She, to keep her daughter secure, but they won't really have a connection. And I realized if I made a move right then and there, I probably would have gotten been able to, you know, fool around with her right then and there. And it was like, and I realized that I could have done it and there would have been no repercussions or anything. It just would have been what it was. And I realized that in that particular moment is who did I want? To be in life, did I want to be the guy that always that 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 went after women like this, or did I want something more? And although I wasn't ready for after I'd just been through everything I went through in there, I wasn't ready for any kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I realized I realized that it was one like it was just one of those things like, and I just realized that life has this tendency to you say you want something, okay, even now. I mentioned the relationship thing. I, right now, I have all like the, I'm, I'm going through the Instagram. All these pretty women are are, are are trying to do anything they can to get money out of me, and they're showing me absolutely everything. Right? This is just one of those things. Like right now, like I, it happens all the time on Instagram. Next, to me, hi, hi, and then it goes right in, right in, right into it. It's like okay, and what I real and, and it's just one of those things where it's just like again, I I don't pull punches. I just don't. This is just who I am. Right. And so it's one of those things where I've learned there is a, there is all the time you're tested and all the time you kind of dictate who you do. At the end of the day, you do exactly what you want to do. And that's the truth for all of us. So the question then is, are we doing what we want? Or are we letting our desires control us? And that's a very, that's, that's a big, big personal, internal, self-reflective thing. But once I realized that, it, it made it easier to understand people. 
And why also it made it made it easier to forgive people too, including myself, right? Because it, it because when you realize there's something they wanted in this, it may not be necessarily you know, the way it manifests itself might not always be the healthiest thing. But if you look at it from the human perspective, what did they want in this? You can learn, right? You can learn you learn stuff, right? Most of most of our most of our wants aren't in themselves a crime. It's how they can be expressed, and that's not that, right. And that that's when we can hurt ourselves or hurt other people, right? And even sometimes with all the best of intentions, we end up hurting people anyway. Some accidents happen. Um, so I've learned all this. So it made it it, it it's made me it's made me more forgiving, right? Because um, Lord knows I've screwed up big time. Right, and, right, and 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 maybe and maybe it's a hopeful, a hopeful thing more than anything else is that um, ultimately, if there, if I do believe in God, right, and if I do confront Him in, in the throne, He's going to be forgiving with me for some of my exponential fuck ups, right? He's going to be as forgiving as some other people, right? And, and, and nobody's perfect, and I know I fall very short. In spite mm-hmm. of everything I've learned, mm-hmm. but yeah, you're constantly te- like you're constantly tested like this, and I don't think you're meant to pass every test either. I think I think oh. sometimes, I think sometimes I think sometimes we all we all have weaknesses, and sometimes and sometimes you know, in that in those failures you learn what they are, right? And it's the only way you do learn. So I don't think we're meant to pass every test either. I just think. But I do think we are tested all the time. How bad do you want something? And then again, relationships, business, all those things. Everything you want in life, you have, and this is why I said you have to fight for your worth at the end of the day, because life will test you. People will test you, right? And you have to battle, and you got to battle your, your own issues with your own self-respect. You have to find, like, that's why it's so important to have it. Because if you don't have it, people are going to walk on you. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. They really are. And and I think the thing is, too, is after a certain point, right? So, you know, it's because you're allowing them to walk on you. It is a want. You're serving a want. Yeah. No, you're serving a want. So you may not, you don't see it like, why would you, you know, you don't see it like that, but. You know, after a while, I've learned that. Yeah, no, no. So, I mean, okay, again, let's look at it from the point of view of want. Maybe you don't want to be alone, and it's better to go through that than, than to, to be alone. Maybe that terrifies you. Maybe you just don't see, maybe you, you, because it's how you see yourself. You don't see yourself as someone that has, that's worthy of, of these good things. We have imposter syndrome fighting in us all the time, too. All right? And so... So when you have that, you, you're seeing people being, um, so you see that assault all the time. And sometimes it's easy. Going back to something I said earlier, it's easy to do nothing. It's hard to stand up for yourself. Mm-hmm. Right? You, you're gonna, you have to be willing to piss people off. Mm-hmm. Right? And again, not everybody wants to do that. Mm-hmm. And these are just three examples. Yes. No, go to your room. Thank you. I'll be done very soon. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Does that make sense? A lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Made you think? Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. It did. Yeah. It's just that's it. Like that's like again. I, and this is shit I've learned. Like it just observing, interviewing people, living my life. It's you learn these things, and you realize that like the lessons for you are there for you to learn and pick up, um, and you can use them as you see fit. Now, saying everything I've just said, that doesn't guarantee I'm going to be successful at what I do. You see that, right? It doesn't guarantee it, but. What it makes me aware of, it makes me aware of the pitfalls I could run into in the journey, and I can do my best to avoid them, right? So, like, life is inherently unfair. 
that's not oh. a bad that's not a bad thing i think it's actually a good thing because i think if life was fully fair i don't know about you but considering some of the things i've done in this life i probably wouldn't be here right now if life was fair <laughs> right so right so and and so i i am very grateful for the grace of my parents what that does mean is that there's a paradox and the paradox is this you do absolutely so are you a star trek fan not a fan but i've seen a few episodes okay so one of my favorite quotes is from next generation he um he john Luc picard talks to mr data he goes mr data it is possible to do every move correctly and still lose he's correct he is absolutely correct you can do absolutely everything right and you still not guaranteed to succeed let's talk about guarantees because i want to tell you about a conversation i have with someone sure about guarantees i had a conversation with my a friend of mine this is a couple of years and i was just leaving my my marriage and she said to me no maybe i was still like maybe i was in the process i can't remember but she said to me she was chopping vegetables i was talking to her and she said to me you know what your problem is you're always looking for a guarantee that's what she said to me mm -hmm. so you always go after the low-hanging fruit baby there's no guarantees Oh, I felt slayed. I felt slayed. I was like, I never seen, you were called out. seen it like that. I, was, I felt slayed in the heart. I was like, oh. she was like, there, you, you, you have to stop living life like there's a guarantee. So that's why she was, I think, I don't remember where I was with my husband, but she's like, you thought that was the guarantee. And then now that's not working, you, you don't know what to do. <laughs> So it was so yeah. thinking about that was like, so ever since she told me that I see it in other, I see it in myself first. That's why. So I see it in other people. I can see right away when people are looking for that guarantee. So the reason I'm talking about this is you reminded me when you said, I, I love that. I mean, I have never heard that quote, but you could do everything right, but it could still not work out. Mm -hmm. And it keeps you humble. It keeps you innovative. It keeps you nimble. And then the thing that I learned when I fixed, when I started to change that mindset, the thing that I learned is now I go after bigger, start to see that everywhere in my life. Like she's, she's right. I'm always going after the guarantee, the low hanging fruit. And so once I, so that, so yeah, so once I got out of that, everything I've accomplished so recent, I, I'm not as concerned about it working out. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for the, I'm just like, well, this is what I want to do. Like I, I'm giving my best. I think I'll be good. And a, a lot of things have worked out. If you're looking for a guaranteed path to victory, there is not. doesn't matter. We can talk relationships. We can talk business. We can talk life. There's only one, there's only really one guarantee in this life probably not walking out right only one person only one person got to walk kind of walk out of this life only one everybody else died including jesus right so everybody else died so you ain't, you're probably not walking away from this that's the only guarantee you've got between now and then it's whatever it looks like right whatever you want it to you have this we have this uncanny ability to so your desire, when you were helped stab, you wanted security, which by the way, is not in, which it, which by the way, is not an, un, un, it's very relatable. You know what I'm, I'm, I'm looking for. Oh, I mean, of course. Yeah, it's totally relatable. Of course. I mean, I'm looking, I'm looking. It's totally relatable, but I think what was different that helped me is I wasn't aware. So now I feel oh. aware where I'm like, oh, yeah. you just, you're looking for that, but that's not going to serve you in this. Like what's going to serve, you? you know? So now I can, I, I can, you know, it's, it's like when you we were talking about trust earlier, why do people have those traumas with the trust? You know, once they've gotten out of, they're looking for that security guarantee right and they it's like well i don't know mm -hmm. so but if but because i've learned that there's no guarantees and don't go after the low hanging fruit because you're looking for that no you know there is really no security 
now I have no problem going after, like, let's say even say a relationship. I don't feel that mistrust. Like, so if I'm in a relationship with someone and it's like, well, what if they cheat on you? Like, I'll have a woman tell me, what if this happens? And I'll be like, I don't even care. Like, then we'll break up. <laughs> like, well, it, or again, you, you, I'll you break up. So, okay, lot, lot, lot of spots we can go. So I'm going to go business. So I'm going to go the business route. Then we're going to go the relationship route. Because I think, I, I think since relationships are what you ultimately care about, I think we're, we'll, we'll go do it both ways. Business route. So here, here's the thing. I know people who want to become social workers or insurance salesmen or something or, or and something or even a trade. Now, some people, they just really want to do that, right? And that's more power to them. I, 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 now that I am older slash wiser, we'll, we'll, we'll leave the wise to a debate for another podcast. But now that I'm older slash wiser, um, I recognize the fact that people, again, often people do what they want to do. So if they want to do this, whatever that whatever that want is, whatever want they're serving, I have a buddy who's a plumber. He's and, and he loves the job. He's come to really love the job. And when he started again, and, and, but his initial reasons was he wanted something better in life, and he wanted something that he thought would be relatively secure. Again, security being the big motivator there. Plumbers are pretty bulletproof in any economy. He's always going to have work. It's never it's never not gonna. Be, it's never not no matter how bad it gets he's always going to be paid yeah. so i mean on one hand i totally understand his perspective and he likes what he does which is a bonus but i know people who have yeah. made these decisions right not him but other people who have gone with the same idea and then life's just saying fuck you that's not your pet that's not what you meant to do and 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 uh my, my dad's living proof of this. So when we, when we were, it took him until his late forties to realize that he was self-employed and he made his most money when he was self-employed when he married my mom. Now things happened there. Like I said, the relationship went sour and he had to, basically he put himself out of business and he went back to work. I don't know how he did it. You know, in some ways I don't know how he did it because I, I don't think I could do that anymore. At least not on a full-time basis. Um, so... Or like I said, unless I'm paid very well, I enjoy the job. So like, yeah, it has to hit very, very certain requirements for me to be like, I'm in. Otherwise, like, nope, nope, I'm not gonna last, and I just know it. So kudos to him; he's tougher than I am um, in that regard. But I also realized, like, he was again, he was looking for the secure thing. He wanted a like, well, all his buddies got, all his guys got this, like, when they're working at Chrysler in Windsor, Ontario, because it, it's pretty secure once you're in there. Surprise, you like you're you're gonna, you're gonna make ridiculous money. You're gonna you're gonna live a good life. Blah 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 blah. It never worked out for him that way. And looking at his buddies that went through that process, it's probably for the best, right? They have money and nothing else. A lot of them. Oh my god. Uh, right, but no. You know, you said something. I have to correct that. It's not that relationships are more important to me than business. It's just that I really do think business is simple. I yes. think like people like overcomplicate it. Like I, I, it's really like, it's really the simplest thing. And you have, the, and people get really emotional when they're talking. They get really, you know, they, they, they see so much of themselves in it. And it's just like, no, that's not really what it's about. It's just about what is your product? What is your service? And how are you going to get people to get into in, interested in that? Like, how are you, you know, what are you going to, how, how are you going to, continue like advertising how are you going to continue to drum up business where people are actually interested in your product or your service yeah. or both or whatever and it's are they are emotional they are complex they're not simple they are are they are complex you know so i find it's really fun to talk about them but business uh -huh. is like i don't care if it's apple hot like i don't care what it is you you get down to the deliverables and the conversation going to be similar for those businesses that are successful. Maybe each failure is unique, has a principled way to go, you know? So I just wanted to correct that. Okay, no, fair enough. I'm actually, I, I, and I'm I have actually to go here soon. Just... I have to, it's like 509, I have to go soon. <laughs> okay, so, so. Get, we'll do this. We'll do this like, like in two minutes. Soon. Uh, like like two minutes soon. Oh geez. So I have to go. I, I, if I, I finish the point. Okay, I have to go. 5 I have to okay. go. Five fifteen. Like I can I can push it to five twenty. 
Okay, no, okay. So, so how about this? How about this? We'll we'll do five more minutes of chat. We'll wrap up and plug your shit. We'll talk a little bit off the air, and then we'll 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 go. Okay. I would. The only pushback I was going to give to you is I actually think business and relationships are similar. In one thing, they're about your connections to human beings. The product doesn't. I, I said something very important. The product, in one sense, doesn't matter. When you talk service, when you talk when you talk service, it's really how am I best again? How am I building a relationship with my client? You are building a relationship. Yep. It's just a simpler relationship. A relationship, yeah. right, has ups, downs, <laughs> lefts, rights, and. and Cause we're all crazy. We're all crazy at the end of yeah. the day. We're all yeah. just crazy motherfuckers. And that's just, that's yeah. just like, yeah, right. And, and, and I say it like that because yeah, because we don't, our strengths, our unique strengths, like seeing you at your best is freaking awesome. Seeing you at your worst. Right. I mean, in a relationship, what it comes down to is, can I see you at your worst and still love you and still be there for you? Right. Cause yeah. like, like that's the nature, that's the true nature of love. It's not yeah. when things are great. It's when. Yeah, I agree. Oh my yeah. God. I'm always telling people that. Saying that, I'm like, it's very easy to, or any type of relationship where things are going good. Even a business relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. That's the thing about customer loyalty. Sometimes things are not going great, and then customers will bounce. They'll go to the next place. And, and, I, and, and and that's fair and that's also fair too like i can't deny i can't i can't fault a customer for doing that um so I, yeah it, it it's just like it depends why like i i have I've also been i've also been the asshole that's fired clients because they don't fit they don't they actually don't fit they they break my i have four reasons to fire somebody and if you if you fall in, now two of them i'm very forgiving on kind right i might still have to fire you but i will be like it, it's not because it's bad it's just situate other situational things two things are just genuine 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 red flags and i'm just uh, you're out i'm out i ain't dealing with that yeah done but i mean it, but relations but relationships are, are kind of yeah right but um but uh like I said, I, I, I think you like me because of how blunt I am. I just don't, like I said, I don't pull punches and I get the feeling that's actually kind of refreshing for you. For right? sure. No. Yeah, yeah. I get yeah. that. So, um, but the thing is, like I said, when, when we look at, like, I remember, like, my, like, I think one of the biggest misnomers about a relationship is it's based on some kind of control. It's not about, like, boundaries are important, Boundaries are very important, and you have to mm -hmm. respect you have to respect your significant other's boundaries. But so again, my 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 my, my, my very first I was really in love with girl I was really in love. With. She still I, we're, we're still kind of friends. She still drives me nuts to this day. She still can do that. But she's one of the very few people that can absolutely drive me completely up the wall. But it's who she is. It's part of like, part of who she is. And I realized something very important when I when we were we were in that relationship was, this is who she is. I'm not going to change her. Can I still find a way to love her anyway? And the answer, like right, that's a that's the the honest. That's it. Anybody you're with, like if you can get rid of live get rid of that control, you have a very I think you have a great better chance of succeeding in a relationship than if you don't. And that, that doesn't guarantee your success either. But I'm, I'm single, so I can, I get, but, but I, I do guarantee, I, I do, I do guarantee, this is what I do guarantee. It's almost always going to be an amicable split. Oh. It's almost always going to be an amicable one and you're probably still going to be friends. Probably. Right. Because it's not, because at that point it just, it doesn't work. And you, there's yeah. an honesty to that. Whereas if it, if you are trying to control the relationship, what ends up happening is whoever the con partner being controlled is sooner or later is going to resent the partner in control and it's going to do everything yeah. in their power to hurt that partner. Eventually it gets yeah. to that point. Yeah. So it's a very, it's a very, very, um, 
it's a very easy mistake a lot of people make. And as I would say, like, like besides money, which is probably the number one reason why relationships do end, right? It's also, it, that's the other reason. It's that someone, there's a power imbalance in the relationship mm. and it will correct itself. That note. You, you, you're like, you're, you're like, I really, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's good, but I, yeah, we can't go any farther because you got to go, right? So, <laughs> it's a good note. Like, that was dope. Like, that was, yeah. that was legit. That's what I was saying. Like, that was like crescendo, like, conductor legit. That was the note. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I, I'm going to invite you back on my show. But the oh. next time you come on, I'm going to invite you back. Ooh. The next time you come on, because here's the other thing too. I don't think I didn't notice this. You are you, again. You you control. I you enjoy being in control of the conversation. You're probably a really good interviewer, but you also <laughs> now I figured out a lot of things about you, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean the audience heard it. Because again, I very good at hearing what people don't say. So, um, next time you come, you have to say more about who you are and what you do. Deal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Deal. All right. On that note, it's time to plug. Mm -hmm. So, what do you want to plug? Um, I'm doing this. Um, so, I coach people on business. So, I'm going to help people um, go from five figure, five figure months to six figure months. So I really, really help people already doing well. So, once you hit ten thousand to ninety nine thousand, I can help you get to a hundred thousand to nine hundred ninety nine thousand. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, but I'm having a challenge, um, August 22nd to 26. It's all over my, my social media, everywhere I am, I'm Aya Igbuho, everywhere. If you go any platform, I'm Aya Igbuho. So you can find me anywhere. So it's a live challenge. We have the VIP experience. We have the general admission and you're going to learn how to crush your fear of selling because a lot of people have like fear of selling. Of course I coach exclusively mompreneurs, but all the stuff I talk about any type of business owner, I just also like talk, talking about mommy. Like I'm also pretty passionate about like, just put those two things together. Yeah. So, um, join the challenge, crush your fear of selling at the end. You're going to, you're going to have more money in your bank account because you're not going to be so, and your business is going to go, is going to grow. So join me in that live challenge. I want to see you there. <laughs> Me? You want to see me there? Or I mean, you, you, you can come. <laughs> you can yeah. come. <laughs> you can come. You're, up, you're, you're welcome. You know, hit that link. Um, so, yeah. But um, I also have books. I write. If you're a mommy, particularly, you probably will resonate with me. I talk a lot about mommy stuff and business stuff. But but I, t I do exclusively also talk about mommy stuff. So my kids are under five. So we talk a lot about stuff <laughs> with kids under five. So find me every Google. You have a website that people can just directly connect to? I do. You? Uh, www.ayagbuho.com. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I just, I, I just, I, I do this because I'm a trained professional and that way people, when they do watch this later on, can definitely, I got it right, right? Oh, yep. Yeah, there you go. Trained motherfucking professional right here, ladies and gentlemen. And Love that. It. We'll do it for this for this conversation. So for those interested, I do an advertising service. I make I make assets. Basically, if you have a project or a person or a product, I can do it. I do video, audio, words, and pictures. Definitely check it out. And for those watching and those listening, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Stay inspired. Keep shining in the dark. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.